Hello YouTubers. Uh, today I want to talk to you about another uh, bleeding edge technology. Uh, in one of my last videos I was talking about using uh, Razor components uh, to write in a, a modern UI web applications without having to use one line of code of JavaScript or use any libraries in JavaScript. Today I'm going to take that a little bit further and um, try to introduce you to the idea of deploying an ASP.NET Core 3.0 with Razor components to Azure so people could see your work even though the technology is still in preview it's still a bleeding edge technology it would still be interesting to see how you can make an, an application uh, a web application run with, with this capabilities run in Azure even though exactly uh, Azure web services do not still su officially support that so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to build an ASP.NET uh, Core application and we're going to call that Razor Web App and let's call that Razor Web App Web. I like to follow some naming conventions. So this is your solution and this is a, a branch, a subset out of your solution. Uh, if you click create and then you pick up uh, ASP.NET Core three which is something you have to install manually um, uh, and then you could use it with Visual Studio 2019 we could pick up here Razor Components project so this is ASP.NET Core 3.0 but you're also going to use Razor Components with it uh, you will notice something I'm not going to add any code to it because it's already doing things that are uh, super cool with the um, uh, rendering and uh, taking advantage of signal R and whatnot. I'm just going to run the application locally first and show you how it's functioning locally and then how you can get it to run as a web application deployed to Azure so you could share your application with other people uh, not just run it locally. So I'm running my application here and with the, the application basically comes in with a template that um, just just a showing of the capabilities of Razor components. Um, let's load here. So it has the counter, the fetch data, it goes in and hits an API. It's not really an API, it's more like a service and then pulls back the data and renders it. Great, so it works like this locally, which is fantastic. But if I go and deploy that, let's go ahead and deploy that to Azure. You're gonna notice something interesting. So here's publish. Here is Razor Web App. I don't know if that name is already taken. Uh, let's create a special resource group here, Razor Web Resources, and a plan. When I create specific plan and specific resources, you know that it makes it easier to just get rid of the whole thing once the demo is over. You don't have to you know, worry what other resources are sharing this resource group and whatnot. You could just delete the entire resource group and you're good to go. So let's deploy that to Azure and see what happens. Just taking a little bit of second there. So the thing about ASP.NET Core 3.0 is that it's still bleeding edge, still in preview. So um, naturally Azure uh, App Services is not going to support uh, that kind of, like as you can see here in the deployment, it's, it's targeting a preview version of ASP.NET uh, core 3.0 and not just that it we're also going a little bit to the edge here by using razor components so it's not just ASP.NET Core 3 there's also a razor, uh, razor, uh, razor components part uh, that is that is part of this so all right so it's it's passing in a bunch of files and should eventually as soon as the deployment is over it's gonna roll up a new uh, window there you go so check out this error that we got it says your application requires .NET Core Runtime 3.0. However, Azure App Services currently supports only up to 2.2. .2. 
So what do we do about this problem? I did a little bit of research and then your application is throwing an error, right? So I did a little bit of research and Azure comes in with really cool feature called uh, Azure App Services extensions. And you can use these extensions to actually install a, a bleeding edge uh, preview of whatever you're trying to do. So if we go here, where is our um, Razor? There is Razor uh, services. If, if I go to the web application that I am uh, deploying here, that right now we know that it's not working, right? Uh, if you go to the extensions part in here, And then you click add extension you could actually go in and add in asp.net core 3.0 check this out asp.net 3.0 and then you accept the legal terms yada yada and then it'll just install that and as soon as it installs that now the app service the server that you're hitting is ready and has that extension has that library to run your application in the browser but there's still a trick it'll run ASP.NET Core 3.0 so if you have a web application or a web API and purely in 3.0 it'll work but we have something else on top of that we have Razor components so what do we do about that so okay so this guy is installed we have the preview everything is set up great if I go and refresh my application here where we might require it might requires a a restart let's restart that application real quick restart yes all right let's see if it restarted still still restarting takes a second there there we go so now we used to get that 500 error, you know, we you know, we couldn't find the libraries or whatever you need. Now if I refresh the page, it works. So now you're running ASP.NET Core 3.0 on an app service instance in Azure. There is still a problem. If you go to the counter in here and you click, nothing is working. And this problem was driving me nuts. I had to reach out to Daniel Roth. Daniel Roth is the person who actually um, invented Razor Components and Blazor. So Blazor and then Razor Components. I was like, this is driving me nuts, help me out. And the solution to that is really simple. Like, e look, even fetching the data, it'll fetch the data, but it's not going to do that loading nice UI stuff that happens. So what you really want to do, uh, Razor Components basically uh, relies on Signal R. Signal R lives on top of the web sockets technology. So you're going to have to go back to your um, application app service. And you're going to have to enable web sockets. Once you enable web sockets, now your Razor components and ASP.NET Core 3 are working together better. And web sockets is basically the idea of having a duplex connection between the server and the client. So the server can ping the client just as much as the client is pinging the server. So now that I enabled that, I'm going to click Save. This will save you a lot of time if you're experimenting with uh, Razor components. So now I'm doing that. Let's refresh that guy doing a little bit of work here because we made a settings change should come back in a second okay now moment of truth we're supposed to be pinging the server is this gonna work works like a charm and if you go to the fetch data part it'll show you that loading thing check this out oh not really it's too fast you, you get the point, you know, it's, it, it, it should work perfectly fine, the loading part and whatnot. Um, and the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this, eventually this very video will become completely useless once ASP.NET Core 3.0 and Razor components become official and easy for you to deploy. But until then, I want you to experiment with that because there's a lot of good features in Razor components. There's a lot of stuff that you could learn in there and you don't have to really write any uh, you don't have to know a lot of JavaScript. You don't have to learn much about JavaScript. You don't have to know any JavaScript at all. Um, Razor components are dependent on uh, a pure C sharp code that you can attach to your um, 
HTML and render and do state and do whatever you want. Uh, so that's it. it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.